We left off the last video with the work stands and the steering column locking mechanism, which locks the handlebars to the steering column when the virtual pivot assembly front end closes. So the next thing will be another update actually to the virtual pivot point rising front end system. When I last talked about this setup, I had doubled the number of bars going from two pairs of one inch by one quarter inch cold rolled steel on either side to four pairs, mainly to add lateral stiffness and strength to the assembly. But since that time, I decided to mount the steering column to the frame and the virtual pivot point assembly would raise up and lower only the handlebars instead of the handlebars and the steering column. This eliminated the need for the extra pairs of bars and of course reduced the extra stiffness and strength requirements. So they were downgraded back to single bars on either side again. But now that the steering column locking mechanism was added, which locks the rotation of the handlebars with the rotation of the steering column, there just wasn't enough room for the assembly to turn and still fit inside the bars. Despite that change, I still felt the stiffness and rigidity of the assembly was just too low. So I decided to beef the whole thing up more and also make it wider to make room for the steering column latch assembly. I decided to make the whole assembly out of thick walled one inch square steel tubing. Stiffness increases with the cube of thickness. So something twice as thick is about eight times stiffer. This should make my lateral stiffness quite high. So to start with here, I cut the pieces to the appropriate length and with the correct angles on the bandsaw. Here's the first set, cut and lined up. You can see the angles cut in the lower set, but not yet cut in the upper set. Both sides are cut here and lined up for tack welding against a central bar. A much beefier jig should be used here, but instead of making one, I was quite meticulous with my tack welds. When you weld, the cooling molten metal contracts and pulls the surrounding metal inward, which warps and bends parts where the weld is. You work around this by welding in small sections and in different places, often on opposing sides, to try to get the warping and bending of the metal to cancel out. You can also clamp the workpiece to a larger, stiffer structure, but even these can warp. The force from the cooling metal can be in the many thousands of pounds per square inch range, although the distance they contract is very small. I clamped these to my steel workbench which has a concrete filled top for the final welds. And here are both pieces completely welded. The next pair goes through a similar process. And here are both pairs together. They spread outward to make room for the steering column latch assembly turning when you steer the wheel. To make sure everything gets lined up properly, I put steel dowels or threaded rods through each mounting hole. You can see as they pass through both mounting plates here on either side. I use those rods to ensure the new virtual pivot point bars all line up properly on both sides. And here are the first couple of pieces all mounted and lined up. Everything seemed to work out quite well here. Mounting was difficult as threaded rods are not the greatest things to slide parts up and down along and a rubber mallet and a lot of patience was required here. Now the other side is done. Here the assembly is slightly raised up. Note the narrow bars are still present. They will be removed. That takes care of the lower two pairs of bars on the virtual pivot point assembly. So now on to the upper pairs. The upper pairs didn't have any bends or angles, so I just used the existing bars as templates to drill out the holes in the new one inch square tubing. I drilled them on the milling machine to make sure the holes are straight. And now both pairs are done. It's looking pretty good. The handlebar mounting bracket, which lines up the bars at the far end here, uh, isn't in place yet. So I fabricated that part next, using the existing bars as templates. Here you can see the handlebar mount and upper steering column V-block on the right. With that bar mounted now, the whole assembly really starts to take its final form. And here's another view from the side. There's no significance to the color of the bars there that are white, 
That was just the bars I had on hand. And now with the upper steering column and handlebars. This is a little higher than it would actually go, but it could open much further with this design. There is a 2x4 here just to prop it open. The assembly would be lifted by gas shocks or actuators in practice. You can see here the steering column locking mechanism is in place as well. And another view with the virtual pivot point assembly and the handlebars opened up from the side. I was quite enthused with the result here and thought it was working out quite well. And here some gas shocks are temporarily added. These are the same things that will open car trunks and heavy lids. I've spent some time on this virtual pivot point assembly in this video and this part of the design because it's a significant aspect of the build. As I learned from the ergonomic mock-up, it's difficult to get up and out of such a low vehicle from that recumbent seating position. Making the handlebars rise up and then lock in the up position, you can easily pull yourself up and out. It just makes so much sense. It's really quite unreasonable to not have something like this in a low recumbent motorcycle. It's not something I've seen in any other Akira inspired build or any recumbent motorcycle for that matter. In fact, the only place you really see it is in the movie. I don't know if Otomo added this because it looked really cool or he really thought about what it would be like to get in and out of a bike like that, but it comes off as extremely prescient. And it's in the movie, I'd call it a necessity ergonomically, and it makes the build damn cool. I think it's something that distinguishes a legitimate effort to bring an Akira inspired motorcycle to life from a weak chop job, but maybe I'm just biased. Seriously, let me know what you think in the comments. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks again for watching and sticking with the project, of course. I hope you're all enjoying these. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check back soon.